In this lesson, we're going to continue building out the low poly asset for the arm of the chandelier. All right, so we have our high poly, and I went ahead and I traced around the rest of the low poly. So if we go to our front view, and if I hit F3 on this, if we select the low poly, you'll see that I've started tracing around that, and it's pretty close. There are going to be some areas where, um, you know, it's not you know, matching up exactly the, to the curvature, and that's kind of the idea. You don't want to have so much geometry that it's just going to bog down the the game, okay? Even with this element and the amount of polygons that are on this, it does make me a little uncomfortable, but it's what's necessary. If this is an asset that, um, you know, it has been contracted out and they need something like this, you know, there's just so many things that you can do uh, about it. Now, we could use another method for creating this arm, and we could use a simple plane, uh, which I would be okay with. It's just that the problem would be, you know, in VR, once you get to that certain angle, it would disappear. And that could pull the player out of the presence of the game. And what I mean by that is that, you know, they notice, oh, that's just a flat plane, and then they realize that they're, is, you know, with a, a headset strapped on and uh, that the world that they're in is not as believable as uh, you might want them to believe. So now that I have that outlined, I need to start creating the geometry in the center of that. And so I'm going to hit P on the keyboard. Let's go ahead and make sure that this is shaded. And I want to make sure that my wireframe is turned on. And the way that we're going to go about doing this is by coming in and just selecting some edges on one side and we're going to just bridge this across. And what I'm doing is I'm just coming in and just kind of blocking out some of these islands. And the reason that we're doing this, let me go ahead and bring, put bridge back on there. Oops, I had the wrong edges selected. The reason that I'm doing this is so that way it's easier to use the cap functionality. So what I mean by that is if I select this border, and then I hit cap. You can see that it caps that off and it doesn't cover up any of the holes that are there. And then I can just come in and grab some vertices and use connect or I could even use cut to get the the geometry that I need here. Now it's okay to have triangles on this. It's going to be a flat surface. We're not actually going to raise that off because that would just be unnecessary. But you can see that you know we're we're utilizing triangles and we're allowing this to um, to have the geometry that it needs for this. Now, if you start getting in and you notice that uh, perhaps uh, you're getting a lot of weird triangles, I really wouldn't worry about it because this is a static object. So there's not really a wrong way of doing this. You just go in and start bridging um, edges together and then if you cap them you need to make sure that you select vertices and using connect for this okay and so you can see this entire process now what I like to do on like these rounded portions here what I will do is come in and just grab one of the edges and I'll bridge from one to the other. Okay, so something like this. And then I'll come in and I'll start to create triangles uh, for all of these. Um, so let's, let me actually do this. Let's go from this edge across to here. Let me bridge this. And then I'm going to grab this border and I'll cap that. Then I'm going to go to from this vertex all the way around and I'll just connect it. And I'll just make triangles all the way through. Okay, so it kind of has a spiraling effect here. That's going to keep your you know, your geometry semi-clean. I mean, it, triangles are not always pretty, but 
you can see that that does make sense to add that there. And then we'll come in and I'll bridge from here to here. And then I'll come in and I'll, uh, let's see, try to try to bridge from where I can. Maybe bridge here to here to start out. And then I'll bridge that and then go to this vertex to this vertex and connect it. Okay. And then sometimes you may have to delete polygons, you know, if they don't really make a whole lot of sense. So then I'll take this edge and I'll bridge it from here to here. And then I'll take that entire border right there and then just cap it. And then go vertex to vertex. Um, normally, whenever you're using this connect function, you never want to grab more than three vertices at a time. Uh, if I do it this way and I hit connect, it creates a triangle between the three. But if I were to connect or grab more than that and I hit connect, sometimes this doesn't always work. So just be careful of that. Okay, see, it, it didn't work that time. So you can always ensure that you're going to get that pretty triangle uh, session there. And yeah, I think that's that covers it there. Now there is a lot to do, and it does take a little while to to go through this. But again, that's part of the retoppling pro, um, project. So I'm going to go ahead and just stop this here. And in the next lesson, I'll have this all finished, have it all ready, and then what we'll do from there is we'll begin to create the low poly assets for the rest of the chandelier itself.